Hi, what's going on YouTube? I'm back, and today we're gonna to be looking at how we can make custom Rhino display modes. Um, so you might be familiar with the rendered view, wireframe view, uh, shaded view, potentially even Arctic view, uh, but what you might not know is that you can actually make your own. So for instance, we can make like an Arctic view with line weights, we can make a Revit looking view, we could even make the view of maybe one of your favorite magazines like San Rocco, for instance. Uh, we could even make a, a two-tone gradient view with custom red coloring, um, and you can even really go uh, all the way down the rabbit hole and make like a custom image bitmap view. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but the one really interesting thing is then you can start to intermix these. So for instance, I could take this and then I can apply like a diagrammatic uh, delete um, to it. So I can tell them that I want to get these uh, deleted, for instance. I can also apply uh, like a sort of transparent, transparent line to certain elements of it. So this really has a lot of um, a lot of freedom in terms of how you want to express things, call things out, and, and really just have a different graphical representation to your project. So let's get started. So this video is coming in as the first video of a multi-part video series where I'm going to show people how to essentially make uh, drawings using exclusively Rhino, Rhino layouts, um, and Rhino display modes such that you're able to work with exclusively a 3D model and sort of have like a pseudo building information model that allows you to really articulate uh, clear drawings and clear diagrams and clear ways to communicate information to uh, a client, um, a contractor. I've also done this for uh, construction drawings actually. So there's a number of different applications for this and the really the real draw of this is that you don't have to uh, do make 2D, you don't have to do any uh, drawings that desynchronize any of the information from a central building model. Um, so this is the first, again, this is the first video and there'll be more videos to come that'll show you how we can integrate this into layouts, print widths, um, and just having like clear communicable drawings. All right, so to get us started, we're just gonna click the little drop down thing right here and you'll see that there's a number of existing display modes that you can probably see on your screen that are the same as mine here. And all these are my custom ones. Um, and you've probably worked with these ones before, but these are kind of like templates that we're gonna work with. So we're gonna use the Arctic template and we're gonna type in options. And when you open up options, you'll see this. And if you click the drop down for view and then click display modes, you'll see that you probably have basically just everything up, up until ray traced. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click Arctic Click copy, and then we'll have this thing called copy of Arctic. Let's just rename it custom Arctic, for instance. Name it whatever you want, I don't really care. Then we can click here, and now you might see custom Arctic. So far, nothing has changed, but if we go back to options, we can start to customize it, and we'll see a change in real time. So for instance, let's go through some of the settings. Uh, for instance, the background color. We can make the background color a different color than, what we're, uh, than white. So for instance, if we change it to red, there it is. Uh, we can change it to a two color gradient if we want to. Again, let's, you know, we can do red and, uh, I don't know, purplish, for instance. You can even change it to, you know, you can imagine a four color gradient. You can even change it to an image file. And for image files, you have to click OK to see it, but you can see, there you go. You kind of have an image file as the background. Uh, I'll just switch it back for mine to the application settings. Um, for Arctic mode, you can see that there's this line over here. And that's the ground plane. So if we wanted to turn off the ground plane, we could just do that here. And then you can see that there's not like a real shadow being cast, uh, or this like infinite shadow being cast automatically. Um, there's a number of different settings for visibility, what you want to show, so on and so forth. You can kind of play around with these. And again, just kind of like clicking these on and off and seeing what might, what might be showing, what might not be showing, and what you want to show. Let's say we want to add lines around our shapes. So let's go to, uh, you can see here we're in custom Arctic. Here's objects. We can click the drop down, and there's every single type of object. What we might want to click is surfaces. And then here we go, there's surface edge options. So we can, uh, you know, click one, for instance, to three, you kind of get the idea. Um, let's do that. We can even change the color of these if we wanted to. Uh, we can use a single color for all edges, for instance. Uh, you know, we can do green. Um, you could even, yeah, there's a number of different ways you can, you can even use the object color. So if we change the object color of these from uh, black to red, for instance, like this, you'll see it kind of updates along with it in real time. And so one thing that's really interesting about these lines is they are vector lines and they do scale. So if we type print display and then we go state and then we press on, 
we press enter, if we then select a number of them, for instance, and we change their uh, print width to, let's say, 0 0.6, you can see these now have a thicker line width than the rest of them. And this does transfer to printing drawings and so forth. So you can imagine how you can start to apply this either on a per object basis, or you can do it on a per layer basis. We can create a new layer and say thick, even thicker, and we can do 0.75, change object layer, and there you go. And then you'd have to just change this one to a default line width in there. So now you can imagine that there's this, there's this number of different ways we can start to play and scale these drawings and really have a different output. And I'll, I'll detail this more in another video as well. There's a number of ways you can edit the shadows uh, in the uh, display mode. For instance, if you're in the highest level of the parent directory under custom Arctic, uh, if you scroll to the bottom, you can see lighting scheme. And right now for Arctic mode, uh, its default is uh, ambient occlusion, but we could, for instance, switch that to scene lighting. Then we can click OK, and that will give us a, that can also give us a bit more freedom to figure out how we want to display things. For instance, we could type uh, sun. Um, we can turn on a sun to add to it. And then you can, you know, with this uh, lights option here, you can actually turn on and off the different light sources. Um, but this gives us a little bit of freedom to see it, like kind of set the time. You can do a solar study this way. You kind of get the idea here. Another way that we can set the lighting and the shadows, um, if we go here, under shadows, a lot of these are about the performance and how the shadows are actually represented. For instance, you can turn them off and you'll see that there's just a sort of no shadow environment. Um, a number of these are about performance, but you might want to, uh, you know, change the shadow color again. And you can see that update in real time. So now can you actually even really see where the shadows are populating uh, and what's being affected by the shadows. You can even change the way that the uh, object is displayed when you're moving your screen. So it'll help with memory usage. So if we say like display the object's bounding box and then we click okay, uh, when you move, you see it actually just displays the bounding box, which makes it a lot faster. And then it, when you stop it, it, uh, it'll render the object again. So this is a number of ways to just kind of make things a bit more efficient. I'm going to just change back the shadows to black. Click OK. I'll change this back to black as well. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you is that you can actually adjust, adjust uh, or set a custom, uh, custom material and property for each object. So if we're in the uh, default uh, highest directory for this display mode, we can use a custom material, uh, which is what we have here. So we can go to customize. There's a number of different settings here that have some effect on the way the uh, object displays, whether it's its gloss, its, reflect its reflectivity, luminosity, but that doesn't really matter too much when we're just into the display mode. But what you can really do is set a texture. Um, so for instance, if we wanted to assign a texture here, we could try any of these, for instance. Click OK. And now you can see you have a custom B rep with a custom bitmap image on top of it. You can also start to assign the, uh, the scaling of these images. So for instance, you can do apply box mapping as a command. You just set your box to whatever you want. What I'll do 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters capped. Yes. Mapping channel. And you can kind of see that they're all looking quite duplicative. Go here. We can click the show mapping button and scale this up. So that's how you, that's how you adjust the uh, sort of bit mapping and texture mapping for objects in Rhino. All right, so now we have a number of different objects uh, with a custom bitmap, and we might want to assign a custom display mode to each object. So what we're going to type is we're going to type set object display mode, mode, and then we'll use, uh, we can use a number of them. For instance, one that I use pretty often uh, is CLR transparent line. And I like to use these for diagrams where, for instance, you might want to be able to see through something. And you can just keep on assigning this to a number. You can also do, you know, pure color, uh, for instance, which again will change based on the uh, there we go. So that's like on a per object basis, that one. Um, we can also do set object display mode. 
and then again change the view and we can do a pure pure line for instance so you can see that actually assigns a line to it as well and again all these are scalable in the display mode you can select multiple and you can do set object display mode mode um, some other ones that I have for instance we have delete maybe you don't want to have those in your model anymore you can select over here we can do mode we can actually do one that's just purely invisible so that's another way to hide objects in a bit more of a different way and you can see they're just invisible now this is for really specific conditions but it really comes in handy every now and then set object display mode so you can start to imagine a number of different ways you can kind of intermix these intermix these things and I'll go through uh, some of my projects where I've done some of this stuff to really uh, help bring out some of the details but that's everything and then if you really want to set them all back you can just do set object display mode and then you can click mode here and th at the very end there should be something called use view so you can just click that if you want to let's try it again set object display mode mode you can even sometimes you might have to type it if you have like a bunch of display modes like me but there you go use view set up display mode mode use view you kind of get the idea so now you have a gist of how setting object, uh, custom object display modes works. You can actually make it a lot faster by setting up a couple hotkeys. So for instance, if I just select these objects and press Control alt v and then I press uh, Transparent Line, for instance, it's much faster than having to type Set Object Display Mode, press M, and then type Use View. So again, you can just, again, select, bam, 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 bam. Um, which again, is just about making it much easier to kind of cycle through a lot of these options. All right, so one last thing you might want to know is that if you want to transfer these settings over to a new computer or something like that, or you want to reinstall Rhino, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to export your settings. Um, so this is something kind of bonus, but what you can do is type uh, options export, and you can just export your file named, you know, the year, for instance, um, Rhino 7 settings. Okay, and there you go. And finally, after like a minute, it finally finished exporting. Uh, and you would just want to use options import to import those settings. So here we have them here. Here's all of our settings. We can click open and then uh, you can select whatever you want to bring in. So that's a way to kind of transfer these settings across computers uh, in case you're working at like at home and on a desktop computer or whatnot. So just kind of something to think about. So again, this has been a tutorial on display modes. This is really good for diagramming and helping you quickly communicate information uh, and help structure complex drawings with lots of information in a clear and concise way. I'd be really excited to see what you guys come up with with this, so please leave a, leave a comment and, and send me a link to, to some custom display modes that you've made. So that's it from me, and see you in the next video.